to I Love My Club By with me, your host, Seamus Barry, the podcast that gives you the insight into our local games of hurling and camogie. Join us as we take a look at some of the characters around the county on I Love My Club By. I'm delighted to say we're in the Riverside Cottage this evening and we're going to be previewing Bally Gunner versus Bally Hale. We have Fergal Hartley, we have Andy Maloney, and we have Jerry Cullinan, as he told me beforehand to make sure I got it right. Uh, gentlemen, welcome. It's a, a pleasure to have you here. Um, I suppose we'll start off, Fergal, with yourself. Uh, Bally Gunner's journey so far, I suppose they got a big test the last day, probably got pushed most they did. Uh, would you say they take great confidence from the last day? Uh, yeah, but I think they'll take great confidence from the whole year. Uh, I mean, another year unbeaten in Watford, and I mean, every game so far, it's come different ways, and they've, anything that was put at them, they've passed every test with flying colours, really, from the Lockmore game in difficult conditions to, you know, Kilmallock, which we expected was going to be a huge test, and, and it was a test, but Limerick champions now, you know, the Limerick champions would always believe in themselves that they're going to be All-Ireland champions. That's the way they are now, and the same as Kilkenny would have in the past. The best team in Limerick is often regarded as going to be the best team in the country, and, and, and obviously, we bet Kilmallock with ease in the end. So, and Slotnil was always going to be a different test in Parnell Park. It's a horrible place to go. It's just a horrible place to go in, in every respect, in terms of where it's located, in terms of everything about it. It's tight, it's condensed. There's nothing good about Parnell Park other than we got out of there with a win. So and it's been away for years. Like, I've never liked going there to play, to watch the game, anything. And it's a Northern team coming down, and Northern teams are a different prospect. Uh, so it was a different challenge and again but no matter what challenge we put up to the lads they pass with flying colours and Jerry, I suppose to yourself then the journey like Fergal said another unbeaten year in Waterford do you think sometimes that does Ballygunner a disadvantage with maybe the competition not being as strong and then they only get tested when they come outside of Waterford uh, could I say first of all Seamus that it's a great honour for me to be sitting here with a legend on my left and another legend on my right. <laughs> uh, uh, to answer I'm your sure question, you're sure about the left, yeah? You're sure, yeah. You're sure about I'm, I'm sure about both. <laughs> I'm sure about both, uh, Fergal. Yeah. Um, just to answer your question, now I wouldn't agree with that, Seamus. I think, I think it's. Uh, uh, I think if you if you go through all the matches that Ballygunner played uh, in the championship this year, there was one game that they were looking to win above all. And that was against Mount Sinai in the in the Waterford semi-final and indeed Mount Sinai had chances at the very end they, they had a chance of levelling they went for a goal went barely wide although I think Saki would have saved it if, if it was just inside the, the post but uh, had they got a point they had the momentum at that stage had they, got, had they gone for a point and levelled it then the, the, the momentum was probably with them but in fairness to our lads they, they, you know, they, they scored two, two good points at the end which uh, showed really that they could they, they can perform when the pressure when the pressure is on. I suppose it also say that for my water in the quarter final were a point ahead uh, at half time. So like they they're, they're, like while the, the the final was was a was an easy win over Ron Moore, but I think that's probably because Ron Moore it was a, it was a big hype for Ron Moore to be in the final after so many years, and they didn't they didn't perform on 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 the day. I suppose you could say similar last year when when uh, when we played <laughs> passage in the final they they probably um, just the, the occasion I suppose was was a bit uh, was, might have been a bit too much for them so we they, they have been tough games in Waterford and while uh, we've won uh, eight championships in a row nearly every year there's one there's one difficult game and uh, you know it stands to us when 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 we when the, when the team goes on to play in in Munster and with that Andy I suppose then. You look at the Mount Sion game, I suppose, coming through that and then winning Watford for the last eight years in a row, as we said. The big day is the, the All-Ireland final day and it's the first one in the club's history. Do you think the lads have enough of big days behind them that they won't be going in nervous? Like you said, the occasion got to roll more, maybe passage last year. Do you think Bally Gunner will be phased by an All-Ireland final day? Um, I wouldn't think so because I just think the last couple of years, in fairness to this team, they've been, uh, you know what I mean, they've, they've really put the head down. Um, like most other club teams are probably training three or four nights a week. These lads are probably training six nights a week. And they're, you know, they're getting the reward for it. Um, they played a good few months of club finals as well, this team. Um, and I've been unlucky in a few occasions, probably with the likes in the Piercy, um and these type, of, these type of teams. So, 
look, they have the experience behind them. There's a lot of experience through that, through that, through the middle of that team. And we were just talking about beforehand, like you know, the team has evolved and changed itself over the last couple of years as well. Even in the last eight, when you look at the the, the one they won first, and then to the one they won last year, there's probably about seven or eight changes as well. You know, so all those players are getting experience the whole time. You mentioned the Waterford Championship. You know, yeah, okay, they, they they've won a few, I suppose, easy one, easier ones, I suppose, and then they've. As Jerry said, they've come across a couple of teams that have nearly taken them in the quarter-final, semi-final stage. That all stands, you know, and it, I suppose it allows to, the club as well, to the team to try new players as well as the year goes on, you know. So, look, we have a very strong panel of players and um, I don't think they'll be phased by this, you know what I mean? I think, if anything, this is what they've been getting ready for for the last probably five, six years, you know. And, and on that, Fergal, looking at it, you're talking about strength within the team. It's probably one of the only club teams that you nearly have two or three inter-county players in every line at some level. Yeah, I suppose uh, between under-20s and guys who played minor and former players, I mean, you know, Philip Manny's not a current inter-county player, but, you know, he's for, yeah, absolutely. Same with Barry Coughlin and, 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 and so on. So in every line. Um, but I think if you ever look through any team that wins Munster Club or... And all Ireland, generally that's the case. I mean, you know, you 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 you, you need exceptional teams to, to win in all Ireland. Um, and I think there's two exceptional teams in the final, and that's the problem. There's two of them. It's not just one of them. That's the problem. Um, but yeah, Ballygunner, I think at the moment are, are are one of the best teams in the country for sure. I, I, my view is the two best teams in the country are in the final at the moment. Uh, but there we're up against you know the most successful team, a club of all time. I mean, going for three in a row. Um, you know. Not that there's need, you need a motivation when you get to an All Ireland final, but geez, if ever a team was going to be motivated to, to make history, uh, to, to, it's it's Bally Hale. So yeah, look, we've strength right throughout the team, absolutely. But at this stage, that's what you're going to come up against. I mean, if you go back, as Andy said, to the likes of the cooler teams, the the Piercy, the Piercy one of the best club teams I've ever seen, and right throughout, they'd have forward, a full inter county forward. Then. Not just a current or past or underage, at a full inter county forward and who are on you know on, on the Limerick panel and whatnot. And that's the calibre teams you're gonna if you're gonna be able to win in All Ireland, you're gonna to have to play against be as good as that and play against teams as good as that. So And Jerry, as Fergal mentioned and Andy's already said prior, seven players, seven, eight players have the teams from nearly every county final looking back over them. There seems to be every year there's two or three young fellas brought through. And that obviously is to do with coaching underage and calibre of player that's in the club, but they must take great credit of the players keep coming through and keep producing every year in Ballygunner. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. It, it's certainly Seamus, um, like the coaching that goes on right from I suppose from the beginners all the way up to to, to minor level is is top class. We're we're very fortunate, uh, and again to refer to the to the two people on, on each side, they're both involved in in, in underage teams, as indeed as we, indeed a lot many of the teams of the. Of the, of the 90s that won five championships in the 90s, three, including a three in a row. So many of those players are involved, uh, coaching teams are involved in teams, and the teams have been, we have been very successful at, at underage. And uh, every year there's there a couple of good players will have come onto, this, come onto the scene. Uh, for example, uh, Ronan Power uh, this year, now, I, I, I think they were, uh, when Ronan was, was, was a minor at under 17, that's in, in, uh, in uh, 2019, he wasn't on the Waterford minor panel. I think there were probably six Ballygunner lads on the, on the panel. But, but uh, he has improved uh, since then. He was obviously on the Waterford under 20 team uh, when they played back in, in, in June, I think they played, and played very well. And every game, with every game that he's played, he's getting better and better. He might have been as good uh, in the semi-final as he had been previously, but his performances in, in, in the championship have been, have been excellent for, for a fella that's, that's only 19 years of age. He's, just to give one example of, an, of a new player coming on, and obviously you, could, you take um, Kevin, Kevin Manny and Paddy, and Paddy Levy are just one year older than him, and, Paddy has been there. He was there in, in 2019. This is, you know, I think he's a veteran at this stage, but but he's still a very young player, as indeed is is, is Kevin. 
I actually, I had a, a friend of mine said it to me. We were watching Passage play Bally Gunner in under 20 final this year. And someone said to me, Paddy Levy must be five or six years over age. Mm. They couldn't believe because he just seems to be around for so does, long. Yeah. And yeah. even in that match itself, I suppose you had a uh, young Patrick Fitzgerald. Um, you have Harry Ruddle in on the scene now as well. Jake Foley is there. So players are constantly coming through. Uh, one player I will refer to, and I... Desi, since he came back from Brighton, I think he's just been exceptional. His footwork, the movement he has, his awareness is just a natural talent. But for me, the main player since he's come back from injury and he's transformed his game, uh, I don't know about you, Andy, but it's Podrick Manny. He was exceptional the last day. Yeah, he's very good. Like, actually, look, Podrick has, has been, you know, probably playing since 2010, I suppose, really, you know. He's a lot of hurling done, you know, and... Um, I'd say the big thing about Porig is his spatial awareness, you know, he's, he knows exactly where everyone is around him. Um, like even, you know, there's not many players who would put that pass to Peter Hogan that created a goal the last day against Loch Neal. Porig saw that, you know, and he was looking the other way, you know, so... Look, he's a big player, but I think Porig and Desi work very well together, you know, and you can see it straight off the tube, really in sync the whole time that, you know, when Porig gets the ball, Desi's moving and, um, and, and vice versa, you know, Desi picks him out as well for... But like, what I like, uh, the way the lads are playing at the moment is, the player in the better position gets the ball. So, like, you know, they're running in with, with the ball. Mikey Manny had a chance of taking a shot the last day and he saw Billy O'Keefe right on the edge of the square, passed it to him. He could, you know, he, you wouldn't have been, he would have been forgiven for taking a shot himself, but, like, he did the right thing. He gave the ball to the man in the right position. So, I think that's standing to the lads. And it was the same with Peter Hogan. He gave that ball to, to Billy O'Keefe as well for the, for, the, for the goal. So, look, that's the big thing. It's a kind of, you know, I know you can pick out the individual players and look, every, cl- every I suppose, team at this level ha- have individual players that stand out. But I think what makes um, Belly Gunner the team that they are is the sum of the parts. And you can see that, you know, when it comes from the club games here in the county. But also when it goes into Munster, you can see that the lads are really playing for themselves. And look, as I said, they be, you asked me a question at the start, will they, will they probably be nervous or whatever overall by this occasion? The lads have been building for this nearly for, you know, six to eight years, you can nearly say. And, and um, you know, they know what they want. And I suppose it's kind of now or never really for a few of them. And, you know, I think they're going to give a good account to themselves. And if they turn up and play like they did against Loch Neal, I think um, they'll, they'll be belay And uh, Fergal... Mentioned Peter Hogan there, fitness levels for me, Peter's fitness levels have gone through the roof since his transition into midfield with Waterford and now playing the role of Bally Gunner and he's, I suppose it's kind of a template of Limerick style, he's up and down the field, he's linking up play. Uh, fitness levels since your days, I know you're 50 tomorrow so I said I'd sneak it in, Fit, fitness levels since your days, do you see a massive change in the game from when it was when you played? Man Seamus, thanks, thanks for that introduction. <laughs> 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 Um, the background noise there. Yeah, background noise there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, um, funny thing, tra- tra- training has changed completely, and 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 I was actually only uh, thinking about it this week in terms of um, we 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 won Munster in two thousand one. Andy's first year with the club, we won Munster in two thousand one, but we we do. So much. Which, yeah, I could say. And we were, we were trying to win it for six or seven years, and Maloney arrived and. Uh, and I mean, I, I was going to say, uh, anyway, yeah, made, made a big impact, made a big impact. I think he actually scored a point that day. That's right, yeah. Uh, I was always oh, good for one chip. He'll tell you. And he, I saw him over 20, 21 years that he's talking about, right? And, 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 he, and, and he does a, he got a goal against Dora Bearfield then and did a kind of a Balotelli kind of a celebration after this kind of thing, like, right? But um, but even back then, we played Tumi Var in the Munster semi final and we drew with him and we were playing the replay. I think it was the following weekend. Uh, but certainly two weeks ago but I think it was the following weekend that we stopped yeah. off in Paul Muck on the way back and right, yeah. it was only supposed to be a couple of pints and uh, we, got the, we got the salad sandwiches and, uh, and uh, the salty 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 and uh, so sure, Jesus ended up in a full on session like, but that's the difference I suppose between now and, and, and then like obviously that's, that's just it's unthinkable yeah, now like so. right but it's great fun now it's a great crack but it's unthinkable now like but the one thing I will say though about uh, fitness the game has come on in every in every facet of the game right every facet and uh, strength and skill and tactically and so on the one thing I will say though is that um, back even back then and, and even before that uh, I probably came from the Gerald Nan era in, in Clare where you know training was designed to be torture and so it was massively intense like in, I, I'd actually say it was more intense in terms of the volume now it wasn't nearly as scientific 
it wasn't nearly as worthwhile but like training sessions were torture at times like right I think it's gone more scientific now so I'd say fitness levels actually were very high back then everything else strength conditioning um, tactical technical you know every facet of the game has, has moved on leaps and bounds but I think fitness levels were huge back then or we, we had a few points along the way as well like you know and Jerry, a lot of people there's always a lot of talk now in recent years about the professionalism coming into the game even though it's still an amateur game there's a lot of work that goes on behind the scenes from players like Fergal was just mentioning you know you've strength and condition you've nutrition fell asleep is monitored GPS trackers for games is there a sense of enjoyment that's getting taken out of the game that's a good question Seamus um, well certainly you'd probably think there, there, there would be but in relation to, to our team certainly not because I, I'm up at the training sessions all the time and uh, there's a great buzz about them and the players are definitely enjoying it they're enjoying everything I know they make they have to make big sacrifices and they have but they never complain and I feel it's probably because they, they see there are rewards at the end of it if you if you if you do what you're supposed to do and do all these things right I mean Christmas was would have been difficult for, you know for them especially you know the Christmas situation you're, you're you, we weren't even. We, we only had played the Munster semi-final a few weeks beforehand. Munster final coming up a few weeks later. Um, I, I think. Even, I think going back to to um, um, the, the 2001, 2002, when the two boys were playing. I, I I feel having won the Munster final then, which I think was probably have been in early December. Uh, I'd say there was a break taken, wouldn't I be right there, lads, for <laughs> 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 a good Christmas. <laughs> and, a good Christmas. Yeah, yeah. and then uh, it probably took a while to get back to, to maybe half the level of, of, of fitness, for preparedness for the, the All Ireland semi final. The old sleep monitors were off. <laughs> yeah, they were. They were indeed. They, they walked away on their feet. I'm trying to say, sorry. I'd say they broke the, the Richter scale, I'd say, at, at that time. But, but certainly from looking at, at our team now, they're enjoying every minute of it and they're, they're very happy to make the sacrifices that they undoubtedly will. And now, win or lose on Sunday, Sunday week, win or lose, you know, they will be finished then and then they can, they can certainly let off a bit of steam for God knows how le- what length of time, but they will. And so that it'll be well worth it at the end so, of yeah. it all. Yeah, yeah. Andy, what would it mean to this group of players? Obviously, you have Shane O'Sullivan still involved. You have Stephen O'Keefe, you have Barry Coughlin, Philip Manny. Um, Barry O'Sullivan, of course, is still involved. Uh, I know there's a few other players flown around on the panel. Fellas, they've been at it a long time. What would it mean for them to get that all Ireland? Oh, sure, look, to mean the world to them, right? That's what they've given up their, I suppose, their last 10 years, really, to, to try and achieve, really, you know? Um, I suppose it would mean a lot to the local, local area as well, you know? It's like, it's the... And the players kind of, you know, have kind of referenced that a good few times, I think, over the last couple of weeks as well. You know, it's not just, um, I suppose, they're doing it for themselves, but they're also doing it for the, the local area here, you know. Um, look, it would mean everything for the lads. It would mean a lot to us as well, you know, because I suppose there's not many people walking around with, a, with an All-Ireland medal in their pocket. And, you know, definitely in the, in the club All-Ireland, it's kind of something special because... Um, you know, these are lads that are playing on the one team or more or less have come up along together, you know, um, s- since they were young fellas. And, and I suppose really to, you know, for, all, for all of them to come at the one time um, and I suppose given the last eight years that the, that the club has achieved success, um, this would be the pinnacle of it really, just to cap it off, you know. And with that Fergal buzz around the area, um, you know, you see flags out and you see bunting and I've seen a lot of uh, social media presence from Ballygunner themselves. There must be a great buzz around the area. Sure, look, it's our, uh, we're, we're club 65 years old and it's our first time in the Ireland final. It's, it's just, it's, the dreams are made of really like, and, and, and uh, you know, and it, it is a worthwhile point I think Andy made, it's, you know, it's, it's the Ireland club final, it's not the Ireland senior hurling mm-hmm. final, it's the Ireland club final and it's a, Massive club effort, like right. I think absolutely the the lads fully get that and fully appreciate that. And like you know, you, you don't get a team to an All Ireland final unless everything has been done right for a hell of a long time, like. And uh, uh, you know, down to things like you know, and, and, and Jerry as chairman was was driving this. You know, ma- we wanted to make sure we had floodlights ready for the off season this year, so as the lads could properly prepare. And those floodlights cost a hell of a lot of money, but that's the kind of the club, I think that, and Ferris, as I say, Jerry is the man at the helm, and 
he, he, he steers the ship and that's the kind of club that I think Ballygunner is that you know it's not just about what the, the senior players are doing There's, that effort has been put in all the way down through the ages and through the committees and there's a huge number of committees and a huge number of people involved and you know it's a bit of a cliche but no stone is left unturned and has no stone has been left unturned by a huge number of people and look the reality is getting a team to an all-earned final whether it is the popular thing to say or not costs a lot of money uh, and that money has to be raised as well and there's a huge machine goes on behind this team so it's a club effort uh, and I think please God if we can uh, if we can if we can go up the steps you know, it won't be 30 lads going up the steps it'll be it'll be hundreds of people you know that's 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 what it's about that's the way it should be um, that's what clubs are about that's this is this is uh, it's huge it's 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 you know it's the thing you dream of when you're when you're that age. I mean and, and, and you know having played county, there's no question there's a gap and the difference between club and county and, 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 and your club does come first. Ultimately it's where you start, it's where you finish, and it's where all your efforts go and uh, there's something special about all our club final day. Pity it's not Patrick's Day. I used to love it when it's on Patrick's Day. It was just a, it was a thing. Patrick's Day was all our club final day. And you know, it's a great day to go out and have a few pints and all that kind of stuff. Although well, my daughter, I had one daughter born on a Patrick's Day, so that put an end to that. Actually, she was born during the All Ireland final. Mm. Uh, Poor Domino won it that year, and um, she just couldn't see the whole, <laughs> get to see the whole thing, like right. But it is, uh, that was a special day. But it's, regardless of what day it's played, it doesn't matter if it's played on the Monday at, at half nine in the morning. The All Ireland hurling club final is, is where you want to be. And looking at your opponents, Jerry. The famous Valley Hale, very small population. You'd wonder how they do it every year in producing. They have players that you would say coming to the end of their career. TJ Reid, Colin Fenley. Last day TJ got that goal. They had a, a tricky battle against St. Thomas's. Would you reckon Bally Gunnar will go out with their own plan or will they go out with a plan to stop the likes of Colin Fenley and TJ Reid? I'd say primarily they'll go out uh, with their own plan. But obviously, you're, you're, they're, not, they're not fooled. They're aware of, of, the, of the opposition. And uh, Bally Hale have top players in, in every position, but particularly their, their forward line. I mean, you mentioned uh, I mean, TJ Reid, who's probably been the best hurler in Ireland given, over the last six or seven years. Um, he might be moving on now, but he's still, he's still a lethal forward, and you saw what happened the two chances he got, the penalty and the, and the free at the end. And uh, certainly, if Benny Gunnar are one, well, if they're one point uh, behind, uh, ahead, coming up to the end, maybe that might be better than being two or th- two behind. <laughs> because if you're two behind, TJ, they'd be going for goals. Colin Fenley is a very dangerous forward. And if Colin Fenley gets the ball in front of the screen, he's only go- there's only one way he's going to go. And bear in mind as well, uh, Adrian Mullen is a top-class forward. And when we played them uh, in the semi-final a couple of years ago, the, 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 the best player they had, the best forward they had, who has subsequently been Young Hurler of the Year in Ireland twice, uh, Young Cody. So like they, they, they have a lethal forward line, but they also have top-class players in, 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 in the back line and at midfield and a very solid goalkeeper. So they're, they're, they're a very, very strong team. And while people have said uh, they were lucky in the semi-final and they were lucky and they were also lucky against St. Rhinos in the, in, the, um, in the Leinster semi-final. But look at, the, look at the score they put up in the Leinster final. So like if you, if you don't keep an eye on their, on their players, then obviously you, you, you can forget about it. And on that own, Cody scored 1-4 the last time the two teams met. And you also, you look, I know Colin Felly will be full forward, but he probably on one of the best man markers that I've seen in Club Hurling in Waterford. And Barry Cochran, mm. you have Stephen in behind him. Stephen runs the whole show in my eyes. I think he's a vital part of it. I think Barry could almost nullify Colin. Do you think Philip will follow TJ or will TJ sit up, Philip? Um, I suppose it's hard to know where they're going to line out, really. Um, yeah, sure, look, Philip marked, like, I think it was, a, what year was it, 2018, was it? 2018, 2018 yeah, yeah. Like, so Philip, Philip marked TJ before, uh, and Barry marked um, and Colin, marked Colin yeah. and they were held scoreless, if I'm right. Uh, both players were held scoreless, so, like, it's well within the capacity of the lads to do that, you know what I mean? Um, I'd agree with Jerry to the point, like, that, you know, I think it's important for our lads to go out and hurl their own game as well, because I think, you know... I suppose if anything we learned over you know a good couple of years is you know sometimes you can over over concentrate on the on the on the on the opposition to the point where you're actually nearly conceding ground to them before you even start. So like I'd be all for go out and try and 
you know, obviously, you know, keep an eye on the danger man, but go out and try and stamp your authority on the game. And I'd be hoping the lads would do that next year because, you know, the lads have a certain style of play and it's worked for them all the way through to to, to get to this final. Like, why change, why change now, you know? Um, and that, for me, would be, like, say, if, if it's a case that TJ is marking Philip, I don't think... Um, Philip will have any, any any problems there. Sure, they marked each other before at the county level. They've marked each other now at club level as well. So it's nothing new for either Barry or Philip to, to, to take on those two men. You know, the, an interesting point. I suppose before the semi finals were played, everyone was talking about Bally Gunnar, Bally Hale final, and you mentioned the Fergal earlier. They are the two best club teams within Ireland. I think in the last couple of years, Bally Gunnar have been unlucky with runs and Munster and stuff like that, and Bally Hale have been there, you know, three in a row. I think everyone it's the final everyone wanted to see when everyone came out of their their own counties and we looked at it Munster and Leinster everyone had a little eye on how are Bally Gunner getting on how are Bally Hale getting on and I think for a neutral even I'm only out the road it is the final I want to see and I think everyone is the same and everyone's really looking forward to it it kind of adds to the occasion that you're playing probably their best club team yeah, and I think there's been a, some really, really top teams around in the last couple of years, Kula and the Piercing and so on, right? And when a couple of teams have been that round like that for a while, yeah, they, they be sure most of the players on both teams are, are nearly household names in Holland, despite being, being 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 club players. So yeah, I think it's 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 it'll be a hugely exciting game. Just going back to the point that Andy made, or, or the question you asked, I think that's actually going to be the real catch twenty two and the real key to the whole thing is 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 if if TG lines out at centre forward and. Like TJ, in my view is I agree. There's an argument to say he's the best runner of all time. If people say Henry Sheffield is the best runner, and I would wouldn't argue with that. I think TJ is better than Henry. Uh, so I mean, he's that good, you know. And I know he's 33, but he's he's he's. Uh, we've arguably never seen a hurler, a hurler like TJ Reid before, right? So what do you do? I mean, our game is built around you know keeping it solid there with Philip at the back and and and. You know, you have this anchor midfielder maybe sitting back to cover off a Roman centre forward. That's fine nine times out of ten. It's fine ninety nine times out of a hundred. But you can't leave TJ Reid between two men and kinda of say, Right, well you keep an eye on him and I'll keep an eye on him and, and it's you're half marking him and trying to close down the space around him. Like you just can't do that way. He's too good. He's too smart. Um so you gotta, you, you, someone has to mark him. So does that mean does that force us into a sweeper early days and and have someone back marking TJ and Philip doing full sweeper? So I don't know what the lads, Darren David and 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 Rory and Patrick and so on, they'd have to make these calls of the day, and we don't know what they're going to be. But it is a huge, huge factor in how this game will play out. Does Philip follow TJ? And if he follows TJ, then you know it leaves us more open than we're used to, we're used to being. Philip is the anchor. He sits there in that D area. You know, and sweeps up, and you know, sometimes he leaves the centre forward off, but our midfielders and our half hours are tracking back. That's fine, as I say, 99 times out of 100, but it might not be fine against TJ Reid and against Bally Hayes. So that's the, that's, that's the big one in my eyes, and how you handle that. And do you, be, do you, do you say, well, we're going to start with a sweeper, or do you wait and see if pans out and see if they do? I don't think any, I know Kilkenny team, I don't think I've ever seen a Kilkenny team uh, uh, play, a play a sweeper or Im- implement it first, like, right? So that's the big question, and how does that play out? And I think that. That question alone could have a huge bearing because if, if TJ Reid gets into his flow, I mean, he's, 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 he's as good as we've ever seen once he's in his flow. Like So that's the big question. But uh, but back to your question, yeah, I think it's, it's, well, it's, it's, it is hugely exciting. I think it's uh, it's something. And we talked that Benny Hale had put the, old, uh, the, old, the green and white on the rock there, but it turns out, turns out they didn't. It turns out it's the one kind wise, yeah, but they're getting a double whammy. It's a good story, though. No, yeah, it's a good story. <laughs> it got a, a lot of clickbait on the yeah. line. Uh, Jerry, the last day, Slough Neil, I think they're the first team in a couple of years that actually put it to Bally Gunner tactically. They brought back their wing forward. He almost emulated what Philip does. And the use of the ball was excellent. They kept it away from Philip. They tried to isolate Barry inside with Brendan Rogers, And it seemed to really work. Bally Hale, as a typical Kilkenny team, usually just go out and play their own style. They never seem to take too much notice of the opposition. I think with respect to Bally Gunner, they're going to have to. With the inside line, you know, Desi, if there's a lot of focus on Desi, we've seen the last day Billy O'Keefe pops up. If Billy O'Keefe is the focus on him, you've Kevin and Mikey Manny coming into the game. So it's going to be interesting to see will Bally Hale go to an orthodox tree at the back because if a player comes out, like you said, and he roams the sweeper and they counteract what Bally Gunner are doing, that leaves space for Desi. And there's one thing that Desi loves in that space. So do you think Bally Hale will try focus on Bally Gunner's full forward line or will they just go out and do their own job? That's a good question. Uh, uh, Seamus, 
It's very hard to know because they, 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 as with all Kilkenny teams, they do play an orthodox game, you know, without without using a sweeper. But uh, they they might have. I don't know if if uh, Darren Mullen will be the one assigned to to marking uh, uh, Desi. He's a damn good corner back, um, and they might feel look at he's good enough to to mark him, but. Uh, Desi has shown in the past that if, once he has a bit of space, then he is he is lethal. So it'll be a big. I mean, we we spoke about being worried about about T.J. Reid, the great T.J. Reid. I've no doubt they're worried about Desi. Uh, but then when they look back on the on the, on the semi final and indeed some of the matches in Munster, they'll see the contribution that Kevin and, and Mikey Manny made. Uh, and that the, all the, Billy O'Keefe has scored five goals in the in the in the cha- since the, the county final. Billy was played in the in the half back line in, in Waterford, and then when Philip when Philip came back, uh, Billy was moved up front, which to me was the best place for him. He is a, he is a better forward than he is a, a half back. So like they have they have more than than Desi to worry about, just as. I suppose when we think about, we'd have more than TJ to worry about in their in their side. So it'll be interesting to see what what plan they will have for 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 Desi. But uh, we'd be hoping that they just leave one man on him and, leave, and that there'd be a lot of space in front of him because Desi will really try thrive on that. But you never know with these Kilkenny fellas what they have up their sleeve. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, try, we'll try to keep it uh, politically correct yeah. here. Yeah. Um, Andy Stephen O'Keefe uh, regarded as best club keeper within Watford no doubt the last couple of years probably one of the best keepers in Ireland if you look at Owen Murphy you have Quaid with Limerick he plays a massive part in how Ballygun are set up and orchestrating it his puck outs are going to be crucial because Kilkenny teams are known for being physical and dominating in the air do you think he'll have a different strategy than the Slough Neil because Slough Neil game they were physical and they were dominant in the air and the one thing about the Ballygunner team they're not the highest in terms of height now they're very physically strong fast and fit do you think Stephen will have to change his game going into the final or will it just be a case of stick to normal? Um, I suppose, look, uh, first of all, I suppose the Slough Neil game was was always going to be a potential banana skin because as much as we consider ourselves being an experienced team going in there, Slough Neil have been very experienced as well in all our semi-finals, albeit through football as well, you know. So they were always going to be a tough team to play, with, play against. And, you know, if you look at any of the teams over the last, I suppose, 12 months to two years it's the football teams have caused the most hassle because the likes of Loch Moore in the, in, in the Munster um, semi-final and you had Slough Neil in the because they play a kind of a running game similar to what what we do um, but going back to Saki um, I would consider Saki along with Owen Murphy of, of Glenmore as the two best keepers in the country you know by, by country mile and you know when it comes to club hurling Saki like has done more than most players you know I know we have you know we've, we, we referenced the forwards earlier on but Saki has done more than any other player probably on the team to keep out the, like some of the shots he's pulled off or saves he's pulled off has, has been unre- unbelievable like you know and a lot of them at close range as well you know so his reflexes are very good and you know uh, you mentioned his puck outs I think look I don't think the, the I'd hope the lads would deviate too far away from what they've been doing. You know, like as Fergus said, they will have to make some allowances, you know, in some changes in their game plan. But I'd be hoping that they try and, you know, in the expanses of, of Crow Park, that they try and keep it as much as what they've been doing the whole time because um, it's been working. You know, and I think, you know, looking at Saki, he's able to drill a ball 60 yards, 70 yards into a lad's hand or into the space for him, or else he can give a short one, you know. So it's great. It's not many clubs have a goalkeeper like that that can actually change it up whenever he, he sees and like he's playing exactly what he sees in front of him you know if he sees that the long puck out is on into space he'll give it if it's not he'll try and pick someone out short an interesting point from the last day Fergal in the semi-final we mentioned panel earlier no subs used thoughts mm. on that yeah it was an interesting one it was an interesting one um, I don't even know what to think about it uh, Seamus uh, other than I suppose the back the players are on the pitch and I suppose that's been a brain Cody thing for, for many years to back the players that you had fate to pick in the first place and uh, don't think you know I know it's easy to say this in hindsight but I don't think there was any time in the game where they had to panic or there, there, there was there was players that you felt you yeah, had to make a change there kind of thing like so I think they just held faith you know you could gag to even kill a game near the end maybe maybe bring on it and bring on one or two but like um, I don't think it's a lack of faith in their bench. I think it was more a case of the faith in what was on the pitch. Um, I think the players were on the pitch. 
they trusted to close out the game and, 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 and that's what they did so but it was an interesting one ordinarily in games that time of the year particularly with heavy conditions and whatnot. You, know, you expect to use 18, 19, sometimes 20 players. Um, but but I think the bench is strong. Um, the bench is strong when you look at the likes of Barry O'Sullivan and Eddie Hayden and Speedy, Jake Foley and Harry Ruddle and so on, many others. Um, with strong bench, um, I suspect in the, in the final we'll see some of that bench being used. And it's interesting, Jerry, about the bench. The players that Fergal has just referenced there, they probably start on every other senior team within Waterford. So it shows the calibre of player that's in Ballygunner currently. And it must, I suppose when you have fellas that are on the panel and you could have more fellas, I know Squelchy and a few others that are in behind the scene and are on the panel. When you have that, that everyone's driving each other because there's so much competition, it's almost like an inter-county setup. And you said there's a buzz about training. It must be a great atmosphere to be involved in. Oh, it's, it's, it's fantastic. And... I mean, just mentioning a couple of the players, um, Eddie Hayden, for example, Eddie didn't play in, in the Waterford Championship, he was away, and then he subsequently came back. And to me, Eddie Hayden would be, would be a must to start on any club. To Eddie Hayden has been so consistent, and even going back to the match against uh, Bally Hayne a couple of years ago, mm. uh, Eddie That's, yeah. was corner back. Corner back, I haven't and, to be here. And, yeah. uh, uh, five or f- maybe ten minutes before half time, he broke his thumb, went off at half time, and uh, then a change changes had to be made then, and uh, it certainly weakened the team. And uh, he was marking on Cody in the first in That's the right, first yeah. half, but it was only when when uh, when Eddie went off. Um, now he would be on any team, but the six backs that Belly Gunner have been uh, have been using, you couldn't drop any of them. Yeah, there's no room for Eddie Hayden to start. But if any of them get injured, or hopefully they won't be playing poorly, then no matter whether it's in the full back line or the half back line, they've already made so. But he's probably the first back to come on. He'll, 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 he'll start in the full back line, and uh, I suppose Tyke Foley possibly would move out if there's one of the one of the half backs. And uh, and even going moving up, you know, Fergal mentioned a few of the, of, of the, of the forwards, uh, like for example, Speedy Power. Was was a top forward, and uh, he's he's actually playing very very well uh, in the in, in, in training and in, in matches that they've had. So if he had to come on, I think then he's just to mention one. Harry so the same would apply to Harry Roddle and and uh, and uh, Barry O'Sullivan. Like he, the, the, the team wouldn't be weakened if 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 those players came on. You mentioned goals. Uh it's a key thing for Valley Gunner and it's probably every game nearly that they played over the last 10 years when they have a chance it's like the old Kilkenny they always take it and that transition where Billy's gone from half back midfield into corner four it's been a revelation five goals since the Waterford County final as Jerry said did people in Valley Gunner when Billy was moved did they almost question the move or was it a case of we'll see what he's like no well I, like I was at a few of the league games earlier on and um the, J- Billy was playing up in the forwards and he looked very comfortable there mm. like Billy is a very very talented player like he's a very skillful player you know and I suppose the biggest thing that Billy has in his, in his uh, I suppose armour is he's very clever you know so he's he's two or three yards a- ahead of probably the player he's marking and maybe that's why the forwards suit him because he seems to be slipped in, slipping into these positions um, and you know he seems to be always in the right place at the right time to get that pass and generally he's put it in the net I'm not too sure. Has he has he scored six goals? That maybe has he? I think it's five or six. Is it five? Yeah, is it yeah, five? Is it? Yeah, it's like it's a fair return, like for in, a back going to the forwards. It's unusual, matches, you know. Yeah, yeah. Like we tried it with Fergal a couple of years ago. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he scored five goals in your whole career, Valley. Scored about uh, three, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll give Fergal his due, right? As a back, he was probably. I remember I was only saying to you earlier, Andy. Uh, Fergal came on. I think you were about 38 or 39 at the time. He came on 2012. We were well, beating you in half. We were beating you in half time. You came on no, centre we back. We were stuck at the time. That time, right? <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he, could, have, he, he could always, he could always do a job as centre back. There's no doubt about that. But I don't think you ever had the legs to go up the four. Like, really. <laughs> he um, played in the Munster semi final. Yeah, yeah, I did. Yeah, Munster semi final. We got bet again, of course. Yeah, against Limerick. No coincidence. No coincidence. No. Looking back from your own time, is there any regret in a sense that you didn't push on and win an All Ireland your own group? Uh, I would say a regret is that Christmas we had in two thousand and one was a regret for sure. Um, like you know, we've only had three All Ireland semi finals. Uh, we've lost two. 
Um, I think the last time we played Belly Hill, look, if we're being honest with ourselves, Belly Hill deserved to beat us that day. Like, right, there was a few things went wrong, and Eddie Hayden was certainly one of them, and uh, breaking his thumb, and you know, there's the ball getting caught in the goal and whatnot. But ultimately, you couldn't go away from that game saying Belly Hill weren't a better team. They were a better team, and they deserved to win it, and 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 and, and they went on and won the All Ireland. Um, but if you go back to 2001. I think if, if, if we played Clarence Bridge and Clarence Bridge were a good team but we were as good if, if not better and we didn't beat them um, we underperformed we didn't perform at all really and, and there's no question the Holy Wheel was Munster back then right and that was what we were target set on and when we won it it was almost like celebrating and you know there's this whole thing about you're in bonus territory and there's no pressure on and you know, I don't buy that really I think you, you play to the, 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 the level of your expectation or ambition you know and our level of our expectation or ambition was to win Munster and whereas we were in bonus territory we underperformed and it was lost opportunity for sure and funny thing about that is we won Munster and um, which is it was a tough Munster to win we had to beat St. Joseph de Rebeerfield to work to the kingpins at the time the clear champions then it'd be Tommy Vara Tommy Dunn and co and then you had to beat Black Rock from Cork so it was a tough monster championship to win and we were deserving winners like we were we were it wasn't just we got a run we were deserving winners and I honestly thought at that stage um, we'd win another two or three in my time um, and we didn't and just goes to show you how hard it is to win and uh, we were beaten by a point a couple of times um, but uh, we Desi didn't win was, Desi was mascot for one of them was he? Was he? Was he? Was he? Very good. But um, uh, so I regret, absolutely regret that we didn't, we didn't, I don't know, perform better for whatever the reasons were against Clarence Bridge because these are opportunities that when you get them, you have to take them with both hands. And probably regret then as well. Mount Sinai went on after that to, to win three, beat us in three finals in a row. And they won their Munster Club then in 2002. Um, and it, we okay, we were an agent team, but there was more in us, and probably we didn't get the best out of ourselves then. So, was there another Monster Club championship? It possibly was, but we didn't grab it. But look, we're, we're, we were happy enough. With, and we had a good time. We had a good. <laughs> we had a good time. We had. Just looking at this group, the last couple of years since 2018, there's been seven changes to the team that will play more than likely in the, the All Ireland final. Um, Bally Hale, obviously, it's a unique final in itself that Bally Hale are only up the road. The, the, both clubs are so close. And I know there is a little bit of a crossover. For example, uh, my grandmother is no solver from Bally Gunner and her mother was from Bally Hale. And, you know, there's all this, this local, uh, I suppose, element to it that you wouldn't normally get in All Ireland final day. But in saying that, Bally Gunner, as a passage man saying, I, I, I was quoted before when I say this, I think they deserve overall. Now, I know in sports, sometimes you don't get what you deserve, but I think this team, the caliber of players it has, what goes on behind the scenes, the fundraising, the money, the effort, I think Bally Gunner deserve to win this All Ireland final. And you can say sometimes people get there, if they're playing Bally Hale, it's just on merit, it's a day out, we'll go up there and we'll see how we get on. I think this is one that Bally Gunner, and I don't think anyone in Watford would begrudge Bally Gunner if they won this All Ireland final. And in my opinion, I think they will win it. And what I'm going to ask you now, Jerry, if you take off your Ballygunner cap, do you believe Ballygunner will win it? Well, I suppose, uh, Seamus, I'd say I think they're in with a very good chance. Uh, and I feel I, I'm actually glad they're playing uh, Bally Hale and uh, in preference to St. Thomas. And I think a lot of, a lot of people, no, maybe not, not, not everyone, but a lot of people in Ballygunner uh, want to play Bally Hale. Uh, but I think you have to you have to just think of their record. You know, they, I mean, they 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 won the last two times. It wasn't played last year. Um, I would say, if they can play the way they are capable of playing, I feel they will win. But that is that is a big if, uh, and obviously it's going to be a tough tough challenge. But they're 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 certainly prepared for it, and I I, I feel they have a good chance, a very good chance. Yeah. The the last day, Andy. Um Looking at the campaign so far, you would say, to a certain respect, Desi was quite enough, and obviously Billy done a lot of damage, and Peter Hogan, uh, you know, Ronan Power, you had Philip, um, Shane, there's a lot of contribution in the team. I think if Desi gets, obviously Crow Park is a dreamland for Desi with the space that's out there. I think this is the stage now for Desi, obviously since he's come back, he's been in the county scene, he's played a bit of football as well. Next, our next Saturday could be the day that Desi lights up Crow Park. And I think everyone that watches him it just gets excited when he gets on the ball and there's a buzz about it. It's almost a euphoria when he's out in the field. Do you feel 
Desi will have pressure going in on him or is it a case that there's so much talent within the team he can just go about his business well I hope there's not, there'll be no pressure on Desi going into this game because since Desi's come back and, and I suppose got back involved in the hurling side of it you know he's paid back Bally Gunner no end in the last couple of years you know in terms of his performances and you mentioned he's lit, like to light up Crow Park every field that Desi's gone into he's nearly lit up you know in terms of his scoring and you may, like people said he was quite last age he still scored five points you know, like if if every forward scored five points, we'd be we'd be we'd be well ahead. You know, um, look, my take on it is, is like if if the lads bring the speed of the game that they played against Kilmallock, and if they if they can match the physical element that they brought against Slough Neil, I think the lads will do it. And they have that is the the main requirement because they've set that standard for themselves, and they know themselves that that has the standard. They have to meet that standard, and if not, get a little even a little bit more out of themselves to do it. And if they do that, well, then you will see space opening up for the likes of Desi. You will see space open up for the likes of uh, Billy O'Keefe, Peter Hogan. And, and I suppose one player that we didn't mention was Mikey Manny. I think Mikey Manny has been playing unbelievable stuff for Ballygunner this year. Both in the county in, in, in the county games, in the club games here within the county. But he's taken that form with him outside uh, into Munster as well. And obviously the last day against Loch Neal, you know, he doesn't probably get the credit he deserves. But he does a lot of work off the ball and he does a lot of running, you know, and he carries a lot of ball about himself, Peter Hogan, up into that forward line, you know. And, you know, if they can replicate that those performances and bring out the best of them, I'm like Jerry, I, I'm delighted that it's Bally Hale to meet because I think all the pressure is on Bally Hale. You know, they're going for, as Fergus said, three in a row, but they're also, I suppose, 50 years, this is their 50 year as a club as well. So the expectation, you know, even from their side of it is to, that, they, that they have to win it or that they're going to win it whereas the lads you know the expectation from the lads it wasn't Munster Club it was Munster Club in our time the expectation from the boys is to win in All-Ireland you know and I don't think they'll put any pressure on themselves I think if they go out and throw off the shackles I think they'll, they'll, they'll do the business The Kilmatic performance is an interesting one it's probably the most accomplished performance that I've seen in Munster Club for a very, very long time. And Kilmallock are no poor team. They came out of Limerick. You know, you have Patrick Swell, you have Napierschig, you have Dune. They, they a really strong Limerick championship. But that day was just an exceptional performance from Ballygunner. Yeah, it was just like the day when it all came together, for sure, and uh, on every level. Um, and it was, it was an exceptional performance. And I think that's maybe when, I think, I think not that people hadn't taken notice of Ballygunner, but it was really when people started feeling like, well, this is the team to beat, and um, yeah, I, I mean, ultimately, if 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 we are to be beaten, and you can look at this both ways. I mean, Ballyhale will have to be good to beat Ballygunner. Now, Ballygunner will have to be good to beat Ballyhale too, because you've two really exceptional teams. And it was that was an exceptional performance. And Ballyhale haven't been lighting up the apart from the Ballycolla game, they haven't lit up the Leinster Championship. I mean, you know, and, and you could argue in terms of run-ins, they had the easier run-in in terms of. I mean, not specifically talking about clubs but in terms of, of counties in you know in in, 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 in Carra, Leash and, and Offaly if you compare that to, to, to Clare Tip and, and Limerick you know in most man's languages that would mean that we had a tougher run albeit that St Thomas is obviously you know was was was, was 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 a huge game for them. So to some extent Ballyhead are, are, are in this year in terms of form are the, are the lesser known quantity if you like because they've been playing probably in games that you couldn't read as much into whereas there's probably a bit more of a read on Bally Gunner and um uh, but yeah, that that was the day. I think that I mean, we've said it probably a couple of times. We said when we played Ballyhead that this was exceptional. But uh, you know, of, of if you go back over the last five years, probably when this team has matured and been in lots of big games, um, that was probably the total performance. I'm gonna. We're coming towards the end of the show here at the, the Riverside Cottage, and I just want to thank the the premises and the lads for having us here. Fergal, uh, same question I asked Jerry: Will Ballygunner win? Again. If we perform, yes. If we perform, yes. That, that's a big... Like, you know, you could argue then if Bally Hill perform to their best, you know, geez, they're going to be so hard to beat if they're at their best. So it's... it's For the neutral, as you say, geez, it's... it's, it's, it's you couldn't ask for better, like, because there's been a lot of bad on Ireland hurling club finals in recent years. Um, I don't think this is going to be one of them. I do think, and again, respectfully to all the other clubs, I think the two best clubs in the country are there I think it's the, it's the it's the one we've been waiting for for all our lives and uh, if we perform we will have to perform we will have to be at our best or very very close to our best if we are at our best I think we'll win it yeah. I think we'll win it Andy Valley Gunner to win Valley Gunner to win yeah 
Jesus, the, the two lads kind of went around about we had yeah, Andy just to get Ballygunner. They yeah. are twin, yeah. <laughs> I do, yeah. I think I, I, as I said to you, the Kilmallock game for me, and I agree, Fergal, that was the kind like that's the best I've seen that team play, you know, in the in all the time I'm watching them, you know, and like there's a lot of players after you know obviously getting older since then, and they're like Parig Manny. That was the best game I've seen Parig Manny playing in a couple of years, you know, and like he's been putting in great performances, but like he controlled the whole setup. And that's a, my, my thinking is if they can put in that performance and bring the physical side that they showed against Loch Neal, I think they'll win it. It's almost uh, like Just Christmas. Like that, Just say it out. <laughs> <laughs> do, you know what, do you know what that is now? I'll, I'll give him a plug in. That's WLR hat on. He needs to be yeah, political yeah, about yeah, his answer. Yeah, 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 um, yeah, yeah. It's almost like Christmas Day, I suppose, the All-Ireland Club Final. It's the, the biggest day of the year. You dream of it when you're younger. And I asked earlier on what would it mean uh, It'd also be great for Waterford hurling in general, not just Bally Gunner. Obviously, it's a great achievement for Bally Gunner, but Waterford have been knocking on the door in terms of the inter county scene, and we wish the lads the best of luck in the coming year. And they seem to be the second best team behind Limerick. It would really start to put Waterford back on the map if Bally Gunner won. Yeah, well, we haven't won a senior All Ireland since 1959 at any rate, right? So, I mean, uh, it'd be huge. And I think, to be fair, we have the support of the vast, vast majority of the county, the, the, there'll always be club rivalries and, 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 and uh, sometimes they can't be put aside. Um, but I think we've supported the, the vast, vast majority of the county. And I think most people feel that. And Whereas I know most people don't want us to win the county championship. That's understandable. If you're not from Ballygunner, you'd want someone else. Everybody wanted Roan Moore to win. Of course he did. That's natural. That's if I wasn't from Bally Gunner myself I'd want Roe Moore to it's win it's probably the one final I didn't want either team to win to be <laughs> honest <laughs> yeah, yeah. but like everybody wants to see Bally Gunner beaten in the championship next year and that's completely understandable right mm-hmm. completely understandable we get that I do think that now you know the whole county should rally behind Bally Gunner and this will be huge for Warford Hurling huge for Warford Hurling and if you go back to when Bally Gunner we were talking about 2001 Bally Gunner won the, or in 2001 Mount Sinai won in 2002 and those two club Munster Championships kind of gave a bit of confidence to Warford to go on and win Munster Championship in 2002, 2002. and De La Salle won it as well yeah so I mean um, it'll be huge for Warford Hurling uh, and you know I hope and I think and I plea with everyone in the county to get behind us and get up to Crow Park if you can because it'll be great days of hurling uh, and of course the football is on after so yeah. it's a double header you know yeah. it's a day out in itself yeah. mm-hmm. yeah. mm-hmm. the, it, the one thing for me that stands out when you're growing up and you're watching the likes of your heroes play it must be great for all the juveniles side of the club jury to be looking up to see their heroes going to Crow Park you know putting performances in, in on the TV you have tonight raising awareness and doing a preview to show the juveniles must be loving this at the moment Oh, absolutely. The, and the, they have so many heroes. Uh, I mean, the, every single player is a hero with, uh, with the juveniles, obviously, some more, than, some more than others. And each player, I suppose, each young player has his own, his or her own uh, idol. Um, I, I suppose Desi would be the, at the moment would be the most popular. But uh, there'd be some, there'd be some, uh, there'd be, there'd be many of the others are very high on, on the list. And... Uh, the, 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 their attitude to training, I think, is is fantastic. When you when they look at the way the seniors train and they see the skills that they have, and it does really encourage them on to, to do a lot better. And you see fellas up on the field now. There's no training much on at the moment. There's only one or two teams actually doing collective training. But some of the lads are are up there individually trying to trying to improve their skills, and that's purely because they they, they actually want to be around. When they, to see the player, the, the seniors training, so it's it's brilliant for them now, brilliant. It must be, um, I suppose we haven't mentioned him a lot, Dara. It must be a, a nice headache to have having the caliber of players that you can choose from. But as Jerry just mentioned, the way the lads uh, both on and off the field hold themselves, you know, even when they do interviews, they come across very well spoken, very manneredly. As they represent the club, it must be great, and Dara must just look at it and. He must be excited every time he goes out with Ballygunner because most times, as Fergal was saying, 99 times out of 100, Ballygunner always perform. You know, you have players all around the field that can light up any game. And for Dara, it must just be the perfect scenario. I think it is. Like, you know, I suppose I suppose the big thing, I suppose Dara has to probably do over the next week or, or so, or the next couple of days really, is to keep, a, I suppose, a lid on that excitement, I suppose, and kind of, you know, keep the lads focused on, on the game. But... Look, I think in fairness to him and in fairness to, I suppose, all the rest of the, the, the area as well, you know, like this team are probably playing the best hurling they've played, you know what I mean, in the last couple of years and they're leaving it, they're, they're doing it now when, when, when we need it most, you know. Um, I think the form book 
is in Ballygunner's favour because I know uh, Fergal alluded to there. I don't think um, Ballyhale are playing as well, you know. But look, in a final, players that don't play well all year suddenly come out and have the game of their life. So you know, anything can happen. Um, you mentioned there about the young kids. I think the biggest trouble we have with the young kids is trying to keep them off the field in Crow Park because they're generally out, out everywhere else in every other place. <laughs> We're trying to keep a bit off it, you know. But um, look, there's great excitement around, you know. Um, and you know the young kids themselves it's great for them to see it because I know when we won in 2001 Philip and Pori were in 5th and 5th and 6th class you know when we brought the cup in and you know like even at that time as well there was a lot of water for people on the field after that match you know that were delighted to see to see Ballygunner win and subsequently Mount Sion to De La Salle and it, it was a whole new era for Waterford Hurling hopefully you know Ballygunner winning uh, Sunday week or yeah Saturday week sorry will will um, will boost on Waterford hurling again another little bit you know and I, could, could I could I say as well that uh, after our monster final win indeed after the All Ireland semi final the, the the messages of congratulations that the club has got from all over the county and before the final already I know it's still well over a week but already we've got we've we've got messages of support from from different clubs Galtier being one. Uh, Belly Duff Upper being another, my the, the club where I'm from, St Mary Sleeve Goa, is another. They're just three, and passage, uh, uh, and passage of course, yeah. But uh, they, they, and, and individuals, individuals. I've met people from different different parts of the county, and uh, every single one of them wished us well, and and I know they're genuine. And I would reiterate the, the point that Fergal made, you know, uh, I was looking at even train times earlier on or, you know, hotel prices for next weekend. It is a double header. And I think everyone in the county should get behind Ballygunner. And especially if you've young kids, it's a great day out to go up. You have the double <coughs> header. And I'm certainly looking forward to it. I'm going up to watch it myself. Um, we'll wrap it up there. I just want to say thanks very much to Tree. Uh, I genuinely wish you the best of luck and uh, I'd be delighted if Ballygunner won because I said for Waterford Hurling for the next generation coming through it does inspire um, and hopefully in a couple of weeks you never know we could be doing an after show I wouldn't say I'd say it could be like to tell you one after a final no. leave it for a couple of weeks uh, I'd say we'll, we'll have to leave it for a couple of weeks but uh, just again to mention the Riverside Cottage thank you very much for, for hosting us and uh, tune in next week to I Love My Club Buyer where you get all your local content for both Camogie and Hurling within Waterford Wherever you're listening, whether it be Ballyduff or Ballygunner, Passage or Port Law, Dungarvan or Dunhill, tune in to I Love My Club by the podcast that brings you closer to Camogie and Hurling in the Waterford club scene. Don't forget, Hurling is our passion.